Hi, counseling students. <clears throat> I wanted to do this supplemental um, video just to show you a few things about paper writing and APA style. I finished yesterday looking at all your drafts, those who turned them in, and I gave you feedback. And remember, if you haven't turned it in, turning in drafts are required. So please get that into me as soon as possible. And I noticed kind of some common things throughout them. So I thought I would take a few minutes and talk about things. Typically, I would do this in class, and I've been so caught up with trying to catch up and figure out how to do everything else that I neglected to figure out a way to do this. So I want to help you with your writing and give you some additional information. So everybody had a good start on those that I read. You all have good information to share and I tried to give you some feedback but there are some commonalities I thought that I would note. So what I've got here in this, um, this is a sample paper and I'm going to just kind of show you a few things here. Um, first of all, don't worry about the footnotes. You're not going to be using footnotes. This paper is in APA style, but she uses footnotes for some reason. So just totally ignore that. But let me point out a couple things that are good about this paper. So first of all, let's take it the, op the opening sentence. It's no secret that obesity is a major health concern in the U.S. and stress and other negative emotions may be contributing to the problem. The best way to open up your paper is with a broad sentence like that. And then you can start to talk a little bit more about it. There's been much research on how the food, so basically you're introducing your topic. Comparatively little research on the relationship between our eating behavior and emotional states. And it goes on down to say, hmm, some, some science behind the tendency to drown our sorrows in a pint of Ben and Jerry. So all this, is the opening paragraph. And you notice that she has got references in this opening paragraph. There should be a reference or two in your opening paragraphs. And I didn't see that a lot in the in your drafts that I wrote because most of this doesn't come from you, for example. So you can say, this is your own thought. It's no secret that obesity, that's a commonly held thought. But when you start talking about things like studies have found, there's some science, well, you need to reference. What are those studies? The relationship between food and mood runs in the reverse direction as well. Okay, what, what does that mean? What is that reverse direction? What is the source for that? Now, once you get past the opening paragraph, and by the way, uh, each paragraph in your paper should be really a half a page maximum in length. Um, I read papers sometimes that the whole paper is one whole paragraph or two whole paragraphs. So for readability, and it really does make a big difference, your paragraph should be half a page in length really at the max. So then once you've done your introduction, then you start to think about the specific points in your paper. Uh, you don't have to do subheadings like this person did, but if you want to, that's okay. So after that, each paragraph in your paper is going to be a subtopic. So for example, this one, influence of mood on eating behavior. And then what you're going to do is to talk about all the studies you found that have to do with that. So she's talking about emotional states, studies have reported eating behaviors, uh, rep and, um, rep response to stress. One such study administered questionnaires assessing their beliefs. The results showed that, okay, so there's one study under that subtopic. And then here's a couple more. There are some areas of research in need of more explanation, however. So here's another study under that subtopic. So this these paragraphs, she's not doing it necessarily sequentially, which I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment, but she's going to talk about all the information and all the studies she has under that subtopic. And then we'll move on to the next subtopic, gender differences. And again, if it helps you, you're more than welcome to have these subheadings here. So then she's going to talk about the studies. And again, these footnotes are annoying. I don't know why she needed to use those. You don't need footnotes. All the studies under that subtopic. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say about this? I'd like to talk a little bit about what information to include. So let's take a look at this paragraph. Another study looked at the effects of acute stress on eating behavior in premenopausal women aged 30 to 45 years. Participants completed both stressful and non-stressful tasks in separate sessions in a lab. After each session, they were exposed to snacks and experimenters measured their food intake. Their levels of salivary cortisol, stress hormone was measured before, during, and after. The results showed that blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that 
that's acceptable. Um, you don't have to, what I want you to do is summarize the studies. Tell us the results. You don't have to talk about the hypotheses. You don't have to talk about how many subjects were in each control group. Um, you, you know, if you want to give the age, if you want to give the number of subjects, that's fine. But less is more. Tell us basically what they did and what the results were. We don't need statistics. You don't need to say it was significant in the 0.05 level. We don't need hypotheses. Get right to the results. Now, what that means is that some of you might be a little bit disappointed because you were counting on having all that to fill up the space in the 10 page paper. Well, I could, you know, if I take one page for each study, I can do all this description of it and it'll take up more space. But that's not how you do an appropriate paper like this. One way to really learn how to do these is to take some of the research articles that you have and you know how they're divided into introduction and then the methods and then the results and then the, the discussion. Well, yours isn't going to be like that because this is a literature review. You're not doing an actual collect data. So your paper is going to be most similar to the introduction section of all those research articles you have. So if you want a good idea of how they're done, read over over those introduction sections. Now obviously those are done by professionals and not what we're expecting here, but that gives you a good idea of what the kind of formatting you do. And I'm going to say a little bit more about that. The other thing that's important to do that I uh, sometimes see missed is connection between paragraphs. So here, so they're talking about, I don't know, real life stress. And then the next paragraph, another study looked at, so this is an attempt to connect these paragraphs. Um, up here, thus individuals may be drawn to snack type foods as a way to self-medicate against their stress. There are some areas of research in need of more explanation, however. So you need to bridge between paragraphs so it seems like you're reading a cohesive paper rather than just a bunch of paragraphs put together, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the reference page and mention a few other things here. Um, well, as far, let me back up here. As far as APA style, I will put um, a reference, a link at the bottom of this video so you can look at some examples of how to do APA style, but this would be correct. So you list your references if it's more than one making this point in alphabetical order by last name. Um, if it's more than three authors, three or more authors, you can put the at all. I think most of you are familiar with this. If you have never used APA style before, uh, let me know and I will find kind of a primer or reference for you to help do that. It's a much easier way of referencing than footnotes. You simply put the author's last name in the year. Okay, so let's go to the reference page here. Okay, so this is a journal article. These are the two authors, and then you put the year, the article title, and then this is the name of the journal, which is in italics. The volume is in italics, and then you put um, the page numbers. Now, this is this must be an older one because a lot of people will put the DOI number. You can do that or not. Um, I think that's still considered pretty optional. I'm not too, I'm not worried about this for this paper. So you always list the three authors' names and then that information. Let me see if I can find a book here to show you. No, she doesn't have a book. Books are listed differently. Again, I will link uh, a good reference to you for that. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is an example of a not so great, where'd it go? I think it's down here, a not so great, okay, uh, way to write the paper. Here's an example of a bad literature review. I just found this online. So. This basically lists article number one, article number two, article number three. So imagine that this is the first page of a paper. Many researchers have shown interest, obviously this is in psychology, coastal erosion, blah, blah, blah. Okay, first article, Joukowsky, and here's what this person did. Okay, and here's what these people did, and here's what these people did. So you're basically, rather than reading about subtopics as I've described to you, subtopic A, and then all the research you found on that, and then subtopic B, and all the research you found on that. This is article one, here's all the information about it. Article two, here's all the information about it. This is an inappropriate way to do a literature review. Um, 
So if any of you did your draft that way or started that, I would like you to really consider, I can't make you do anything, but really consider revising it to put it in the form of this paper that I had just showed you. And this does it correctly. So those are just a few things that I noted as I went through the um, drafts last night. If you have any questions, let me know. And when you turn your second draft in, which is in two weeks, I think it's April 13th, I will again get feedback to you pretty quickly and hopefully help you with some of these issues. So, you know, this is this class is a writing unit. So in addition to helping you learn about the particular subject you're writing about, I'm also helping to assist you with writing. So that's it. And let me know if there's any questions.